Welcome back, kindergartners, to our Making Meaning lesson. I'm so happy to see you all and really happy to also welcome some new faces joining us today. My name is Miss Brandt and I'm a kindergarten teacher right here in Seattle at Rising Star Elementary School. Go Firebirds! I have been so proud to see everyone working so hard this week on learning about nonfiction books and on wondering while we're reading so that we can learn new information and ask questions to better understand our reading. Your teachers and I really are all missing being in class with you every day, and we're so, so glad to see the hard work you're doing wherever you are, even though we can't all be together right now. So, for today's lesson, you're just going to need your extension activities, or if you don't have those, no problem, you'll need a blank piece of paper and also something to write with. All right, let's get started. Last lesson, and the lesson before that, we were reading two nonfiction books. One of them was a baby penguin story, and one of them was a baby duck story. Both of these books are nonfiction books about baby animals. Remember that nonfiction books give us true or real information about animals, people, or things. Now, both of these books, A Baby Penguin Story and A Baby Book Duck Story, are written by Martha E. H. Rustad. So the same author wrote both books. Let's remind our brains what happened in our stories in case you weren't with us the last couple of times. In a baby penguin story, we learned that baby penguins are called chicks. Chicks hatch from an egg and the mom penguin keeps the egg warm until the chick comes out. We also learned that once the chick is there, the parents feed the chick from their mouths to the chick's mouth. Oh, we also learned that baby penguins get a little bit cold, so the mother penguin keeps the baby penguin warm. Ooh, I remember also learning that young penguins learn how to move on the ice because it's very icy where these penguins live. We also learned about how penguins, their furry fluffy feathers start to fall off when they get older. <clears throat> Ooh, and I remember learning about how penguins use their flippers to swim swiftly or quickly through the water. And then at the end of this story, I remember learning about how baby penguins grow up and go off on their own to build their own nest. So kindergartners, I am wondering if you can share with me. Hmm, let's see. Can you share with me what else you remember learning all about baby penguins or chicks? Go ahead and give yourself some time to think. What else do you remember learning about baby penguins or chicks besides those things we just talked about together? So think. Great, and this time I want you to just call and tell me. What else do you remember learning? In whatever language you like, call and tell me, okay? Ready, go. Wow, I heard lots of kindergartners remember that baby penguins or chicks like to eat krill. Remember we learned that Krill is a kind of small shrimp-like animal. Let's see. Ooh, yes. This page reminded our readers of that. Ooh, I heard other readers call me and tell me that they remembered that baby penguins 
like to hop on the rocks. They remembered that where penguins live is rocky or covered in rocks and icy. And lots of kindergartners told me that baby penguin chicks hatch from an egg and that their mom helps them stay warm when they're very little. Wow, great work remembering so many things that you learned about baby penguin chicks. Now, let's switch and see what we remember about a baby duck story. Don't worry if you weren't with us for those lessons. We'll take a little walk through to see what we remember together before I ask you to do it by yourselves. Let's see. Oh, ooh, I remember learning that baby ducks are called ducklings and that they also hatch from eggs. Oh, I remember when they're very little, they feel a little bit cold. <laughs> they stay in their nest. And we learned that baby ducks or ducklings learn many things from their mothers. They learn how to swim. Oh, we learned about their special feet that are webbed that help them to swim. Ooh, we learned that baby penguins eat with their bill like this. This is their bill. Good. What else did we learn? Ooh, I remember learning when baby penguins get older, they also start to have new feathers come in. And when they get a little bit older, they also fly away to be on their own, just like the penguins. Wow, kindergartners. All right, I'm gonna ask you now, what else do you remember learning in this story from the baby duck story? So go ahead and give yourself time to think. What else do you remember learning? Great, this time I want you to whisper into your hand what else you remember learning and I'll make sure I listen. Go ahead, you can say, I learned, I learned. Wow, Tiggy was listening with me and we heard so many great things that kindergartners learned. We heard some kindergartners say that they remember that they learned about how fox might, a fox might want to eat the baby ducklings, but the mom duck scares the fox away by hissing and quacking. I also remember hearing a kindergartner say that they remembered that baby ducks or ducklings were cold when they were little, so their mom helped them stay warm. Wow, so many good facts that students remembered about baby ducklings from our A Baby Duck Story and about baby penguins from our A Baby Penguin Story. Keep those in your mind because we're going to work together to write some things that we learned. Before we do that, let's do a little bit of a review of some of our new vocabulary words that we learned in our two books this week. Behind me, I put them all up on the whiteboard. So first, I'm going to say the word and you're going to say it back. Ready? Scoot. Good. Scooting is moving quickly. Tip, your turn. Good. Tip is like pouring or moving something over, or it can also be the end of something like we talked about, the tip of your nose. This one says rocky, your turn. Perfect. Rocky means covered in rocks, like in this picture. Next one is Icy, your turn. Good, icy means covered in ice. The next one is tasty, your turn. Good, tasty means delicious or very good. 
I rub my tummy when I see this one. Tasty. This one says fluffy. Your turn. Fluffy means soft, just like this dog. Kind of like a baby penguin or ducklings. Fluffy feathers. Great job, readers. Now we're going to read them all together and then we'll play a quick game. Okay, ready? Here we go. Scoot. Tip. Rocky. Icy. Tasty. Fluffy. Good. Okay. I'm going to tell a little story. And when you, when I stop and you know what word goes there, which one of these, you're going to shout it out. Okay. Here's my first example. The baby penguin woke up one day and started to waddle or move from side to side on the ground. But the ground was very cold. It was covered with ice. It was, you got it. It was icy. High five. So the baby penguin walked carefully. Then the ground started to have lots of rocks on it. It was, you got it, it was rocky. So even though it was rocky and icy, the baby penguin was feeling a little bit warm because it had lots of nice, soft feathers that were fluffy, you got it. Mmm, the baby penguin chick was starting to feel a little bit hungry. It was wanting some delicious fish to eat. Some delicious fish, fish that was very... You got it! Tasty! Good job! The penguin was moving quickly across the icy rocky ground. Very, very quickly. The penguin was ready to go so quickly and so it started to scoot you got it scoot means to move quickly let's practice that one again let's say scoot scoot show me scooting good even though the penguin was scooting along it was careful not to over you got it it was careful not to tip over Wow, kindergartners, you learned one, two, three, four, five, six new vocabulary words this week. You'll find these words in your extension activities to keep practicing, and you can just keep practicing them on your own wherever you are too. Good job. Give me a double high five, high 10. Nice. Okay, now I'm going to pull down this chart for us. And this chart says, are you ready? Things we learned about baby animals. You all just told me so many things that you learned about baby animals, both baby penguins or chicks and baby ducks or ducklings. So I'm gonna write them down, some of those things that we learned so that you and I can do some writing on our own using what we learned over the past week. So right now, I want you to really take some time to think about all those things that we've learned. And when I ask you, you're gonna go ahead and shout out what you learned. You're gonna say, I learned. And I will listen and I'll be writing down things that we learned, okay? So take some time right now and think. Point to your brain if it helps you. Think about all those things we learned about baby animals. Good, okay, now go ahead and shout them out. Tidy and I will be listening. Wow. Oh my goodness, kindergartners, Tiggy and I heard 
so many wonderful facts that you all learned about baby animals this week. Instead of writing it over here, I'm actually gonna write it on a paper and hold it up so you can see it even better. Things we learned about baby animals. Tidy and I heard some kindergartners say that they learned baby animals learn to do things from their parents. So here I drew a little baby penguin chick learning how to swim. That's something that we learned in our reading nonfiction books this week. Baby animals learn to do things from their parents. Wow. Tygi and I also heard kindergartners talk about how they learned that chicks and ducklings hatch from eggs. Both chicks and ducklings hatch from eggs. So we have a little egg here. And finally, Tygi and I heard kindergartners say that they learned that penguins and ducks grow new feathers when they get bigger. So here we have a little duckling starting to grow some new feathers as it's getting bigger. Wow, kindergartners, look at all of these facts we have learned about baby animals. Let's read our list together to help us remember all of these wonderful facts. I will point and we can read together. Ready? Here we go. Things we learned about baby animals. Baby animals learn to do things from their parents, like swim. Chicks and ducklings hatch from eggs, just like this one. And finally, we learned penguins and ducks grow new feathers when they get bigger, just like this little duckling right here. Wow, kindergartners, those are some great facts about baby animals. And I also heard other facts that kindergartners learn too. There are so many. We just had room for those three right now. Okay, now it's time for us to do our writing. So, like I said, in your extension activities, you have a paper that has room for you to do today's writing about reading on it. But if you don't have the extension activities, don't worry, I don't have it either. So I'm gonna just use a blank piece of paper to do my writing about reading on. All right, writers ready? The first thing good writers always do is write their name and the date on their paper. You got it. So first things first, I'm going to write my name, Miss Brandt. And then I'll go ahead and write today's date. Now, today is May 1st. So I will write 5-1-20. Now, let's think back to all of those facts that we learned about baby animals. I think I'm going to write that I learned chicks and ducklings hatch from eggs because I thought that was a really interesting facts, fact. So I will write chicks, and I'll make sure I have a finger space, chicks and d d duck. Lings. Wow, thanks for helping me use the sounds that we hear to write our words. Chicks and ducklings hatch. Hatch. Finger space. From, we know that one. From eggs. Eggs. 
And at the end of my sentence, I'll make sure that I put, you got it, a period. Eggs. Let's reread to make sure that it makes sense. Chicks and ducklings hatch from eggs. Great. And then I have some more room here on my paper. So I'm going to add, you know what I'm going to add? I really thought that this week learning about baby animals was so fun. So I'm going to write that. Learning about baby animals is fun. Learning about, about the baby animals is, we know that one, fun, fun. And then at the end of my sentence, be learning about baby animals is fun. My voice gets excited, so I'm going to add an exclamation point. Now, we also know that good writers draw pictures and label their pictures so that their writing is clear and has detail. So here I said chicks and ducklings hatch from eggs. Learning about baby animals is fun. So I'm going to go ahead up here and draw some eggs because I learned that both chicks and ducklings hatch from eggs. And maybe I'll make some ice here because I learned that chicks live in icy cold places. Egg. Eh, eh, eh. I'll add an E here for my label because that's an egg. Wow, kindergartners, thank you for your help to make sure that my writing makes sense, has a capital letter to start and a period at the end of a sentence, has a drawing with a label, and has my name and the date. So kindergartners, now it's your turn. I want you to go ahead and get your paper or extension activities and get started writing some of those facts that we learned together today all about baby animals and all week. I am so proud of your hard work this week and I want to tell you that you are all doing such a good job being non-fiction readers and writers. Taiki and I will see you next week for more Making Meaning Lessons. Keep up the great work. Bye.